Uh, let's say, don't do it. I haven't, I did quite fig, she is not an expert and she has no idea what she's doing. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tony, and I'm a homeschooling mom to four kids. And I'm gonna share with you today how our first three weeks of homeschooling have gone. And I'm gonna share about some changes that we're making already. Yeah, we're making changes. Okay, so if you wanna find out what's been going on with us, then stay tuned. Okay, so we are finishing up our third week of homeschool for the 2022-2023 school year. And I will say overall, it's been really, really awesome. I love some of the changes that we have made this year and how one of the biggest things that we're doing this year is grouping our kids separately. So if you don't know me, if you are new here, like I said, I have four kids. I have a first grader, I've got a fourth grader, a sixth grader, and an eighth grader. And usually in the past, I have grouped them all together and we've just taught family style subjects and I love that. But I decided this year that I wanted to split my kids up and I have a group for, and I have some subjects that I'm doing for my sixth and eighth graders and some that we're, I'm doing for my first and fourth grader and I'm loving it. Like that is probably one of my favorite parts about homeschooling right now is how we're splitting it up. I just feel like the flow is better. I feel like they're learning more because things are more like personalized for their age and for their grade and for the level they're in. I feel like nobody's being stretched to try to meet with the other sibling and nobody's being held back because of someone else. And um, I, I think there's just, there's seasons that keeping everybody together is awesome. And we may get there again. I just think this year was one where I needed to split us up and it's working and it is so awesome. So that is one major thing that's going really well for us. So we're using five in a row for my first and fourth grader, loving it. I will do a five in a row video to show you how we're doing that, how I'm incorporating it, how I make it work for a first grader and a fourth grader and why I feel like it's enough and it's really, really good. I'm, I'm so excited about how that's going. I'm loving it really. And um, my both my kids are loving it. I think my fourth grader is getting more out of this this year than she did doing history and science with her older siblings the last couple of years. So. Uh, just so glad that I'm doing this. I wish I'd done it years before. I did do five in a row a long time ago, but I wish I'd done it like in the recent past, but it's okay. We're doing it now and it's working and it's so good. And it's been fun to see my son more involved in things because he didn't do a whole lot with us last year and he's really loving this. So it's been really fun. So that's going really well. And then the stuff that we're doing with my sixth and eighth graders, that is also going really well. We're uh, The science curriculum that we're using, if you're curious about any specifics about the curriculums that we're using, I will link the, my, uh, my curriculum picks below and you can go through that playlist. I won't bore you guys with going through everything that we're using um, because some of you guys may have already seen that, but I'm really excited about the science we're using just because it's working. I'm not saying it's the best science. It's from Masterbooks, never used it before. It's a uh, doable. I think that is the biggest thing that I needed was something that's doable because I have gotten science before that was just too much. And when you can't get it done, what's the point in having it? If you feel like you're always behind, if you feel like it's too much, uh, I, I just, there's no point in that. Even if it works for everybody else on the planet, if it doesn't work for you, it's, it's not going to work. History is the same history, biblio plan that we've used for the last few years and I'm really loving it. And I like doing it with my sixth and eighth graders because I feel like it's still a lot of information. So I'm not saying they're retaining everything, but I feel like it's just more manageable. They're not having to slow down to wait for my youngest daughter because sometimes when they were answering the questions, the, my big girls could find the answer and they were waiting for my younger daughter sometimes. So I feel like that is working really well just having them grouped the way I have them grouped. We are all loving the stuff that we're doing for our morning basket. I just did a morning basket video. I will link that above too, if you didn't get to see that yet, but that has been awesome. Like, I think that's everybody's favorite time of the day. We're focusing big time on geography as a family and praying for other people of other countries and learning about them and food. It's been fun to learn about food. The first two weeks of school, we learned about China and we learned about the people of China, all this stuff about China. And then we ordered Chinese food. Now we order Chinese food like once a month probably because that's my favorite thing in the whole world. But we have like those favorites, you know, and that's what we order every single time. And I said, okay, we're gonna order Chinese food because it'll go in with what we're studying, but we're gonna order something different. So we ordered three different things and it was good. It's good to try new things. I was scared because we, we only get it like once a month or maybe once every couple months or something. 
So you don't want to get something you're not going to like, you know, because you know you're not going to be able to get it next week. We loved everything we got. It was so good. So I was really, really excited about that. But we're trying to tie in food. And this week we're going to be making something. We're studying about Mongolia and we're going to be making these Mongolian steamed dumplings that are in the, the book Hungry Planet. And we're going to give that a try. So I'm really excited to tie that kind of stuff in. And I just think the fun stuff like that is making it really, really enjoyable. Read alouds. If you guys followed me for any time at all, you know I love reading. I love the idea of read alouds, but I am a failure, a big fat failure at read alouds. I don't know what is wrong with me. When they were little, it was way easier. But the last couple years, I've really struggled to do read alouds on a consistent basis. And guess what? I have done our read aloud every single day. If you think that's awesome, give me a thumbs up on this video because I'm so proud of myself because that is something that I always am like, oh, we're behind on schedule. No, we're not going to do this. I haven't done that. It's been so good. It's a priority and make it a priority and, and it'll happen. So every single day they get out the kinetic sand. That's something that for some reason it's, it's working for now. So every single day they get out the kinetic sand, they build something. Sometimes there's like they're like, mom, what should we build? And I give them a challenge. So they work on building that thing while I'm reading the read aloud. And um, then I pick a winner of whoever's, you know, castle or whatever it was the coolest afterwards, but it's been fun. It keeps them listening and focused, but their hands busy. So they're not like dozing off or poking at each other or anything. So that's been really great. Uh, yeah. So those are all the like really positive things. Now I'm going to tell you about my failures. <laughs> Do you guys want to hear about my failures? Okay. Let's get to that. So one thing I have struggled with is grading. We do Christian lights. So we've got a lot of these light units for like language, for reading, for math, for Bible now. So there's a lot of those little workbooks that they do every single day and they have to be checked every day. And I've gotten behind. And that is a big no-no because then it's, I feel like my school day never ends because we do our school day and then we barely finish. Then all, uh, all my girls are playing soccer. So then we make dinner real quick, rush to soccer. Then I have to come home and grade stuff or I bring stuff to soccer to grade. It's been too much. So I am trying so hard to stay on top of grading. I haven't quite figured out if you guys, I would love to know how you guys do grading. I asked this, I think on Instagram or on YouTube uh, last week. So I was curious how you guys do it. I would love to know how you guys keep up with your grading. Um, not like letter grades, but just checking their seat work. If you have a lot of seat work that they do, because that's something that with four kids and I'm like I said, I'm bouncing back and forth between two different groups of kids. So I'm teaching a lot. It's not just like, here's your work. I'm just sitting here. I'm actually teaching a lot of stuff this year. So I don't have downtime. And then at the end of the day, I, I either have to like grade it right away or I don't know. It, I just haven't figured that out yet until today. Today was actually really good. I, I stayed on top of things. I had switched our schedule around and I felt like our day went a lot smoother and I did get everything graded before I went and chilled on the couch. <laughs> and I feel better. I actually decided why don't I go film my video because I'm already done grading. So that was really great. Yeah, my other question that I would love to know what you guys do is, do you have your kids, so if you check their seat work and they have mistakes, when do you have them fix it? Do they fix it as soon as you're done grading it? Like if I'm not grading it till the end of the day, this is like a and A session, me asking you guys questions. If I grade it at the end of the day and they have stuff wrong, I'm trying to decide, do I pull them back in at like four o'clock and be like, hey guys, uh, you know, I need you to come fix this in math. I need you to come fix this in reading. Or do I wait and have them do it? I usually have them do it before they start the next day, but then it kind of puts them behind. So that's something I'm trying to figure out. I'm still learning. I've been homeschooling for eight, nine years or so, and I'm still figuring this out. I haven't quite figured out what is best so yeah, if you have any tips, let me know. I, I, I'll take them. I, I need help. But I, I did do good. I got everything graded today. So I think it's just make sure I get it graded before I check out from the school room. Like I didn't even leave the school room until I got everything graded. And you know, that that's my goal is to try to do that. But trying to figure that out. So that's the one failure <laughs> I've had. The other one, I wouldn't call it a failure. This, I guess, is just a learning process usually you come up with a schedule, right? You're, this is our school year. We're going to start with this. Then we're going to do this. Then we're going to do this. You have a schedule, right? For the most part, I would assume most people are like that. So I have changed our schedule for at least four times since we started three weeks ago. And you guys might be like, what? Like she's crazy. I couldn't quite figure out how to 
get the flow, get everything done so that we're not working till four o'clock. So I just kept, I kept tweaking it and um, I finally found Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O. Um, it's just this like scheduling app that you can use on your phone. And I put that in last night so I didn't have to write on another piece of paper, write out our schedule. And I typed it out and you can move stuff around so that if you didn't get it done this day, you can move it over to this day. And I just have my schedule written down there. Anyway, that was a big help. So that helped to have it on my phone and not necessarily on the planner or I'm looking for this paper that has our schedule on it because it keeps changing. But I did, this was one thing that I am glad I caught myself before I did it. I was tempted, we had a couple days where school was just taking forever. And I was like, this is too much, I should cut that stuff. That's my morning basket right there. I was like, I should cut some of that out. I should do our read alouds later. Well, that means it won't get done. Or I should, you know, we could take out this. I don't really have to do geography. It's not like a required thing. It's an extra thing. And I started to consider taking out the fun stuff, like the enriching family, special family time stuff. And then I kind of want to smack myself and be like, no, that's the important part. We need to make all this work so that's why I've tweaked the schedule to figure out you know what time do we need to we probably need to start a little early but we are not a morning family so we start at nine and that's as early as we can probably get started because I'm a night owl any other night owls out there <laughs> um, I'm like a 1 a.m. go to sleep kind of person lately I've fallen asleep a little earlier but uh, it's hard to get up before eight don't don't be mad at me and start at nine it's that's about all we can do but with that schedule, I don't want to work until three o'clock, four o'clock every single day. So anyway, I'm just trying to tweak the schedule and figure out what works for us, but I'm not going to get rid of that stuff that's important. I just, I don't know, it worked really well today trying to keep us on track. The other thing I did was I took out the times. This is one of the schedules that, as you can see, I had already revised it a couple times on the print. Then I rewrote it. I rewrote one down here. Anyway, I keep trying to figure this out. But um, one thing I did right here was I had this time, nine o'clock, 9.30, whatever, trying to be done. Okay, we could be done by two. The dangerous part about that is you get to 10 o'clock and I'm say I'm supposed to be doing math and it's actually 10.30 and then you feel like, oh my goodness, we're behind. Or like this morning, grandma stopped by and brought us some pears. So we stopped what we were doing and it delayed us a little bit, but we got to see grandma. Anyway, things happen. And then the whole day you feel like I'm 30 minutes behind. Oh my goodness, now we're half, oh, we're not, we're supposed to be at this point at this time. Anyway, it's mentally exhausting <laughs> to feel like you're behind all day. So I am taking all of these little times out and I probably should know this by now, but I thought it would keep me on schedule this year. I was like, I'm gonna put the time on there and you know, we're gonna make sure we stay, but no, that's not, that's a stressful way to homeschool. <laughs> So I'm taking the times out and we are just doing morning basket and then we're doing this and then we're doing Bible, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just trying to go with, like have that, uh, what do they call it, block scheduling or something? I think it's block scheduling. But then you go from one thing to another and you just have a flow, but you don't have a time. And so we're not stressing ourselves out. I'm not stressing the kids out, trying to make sure, oh, you gotta be done in 10 minutes. And it worked way better. Today was the first day that I felt like we didn't finish super early, but we finished around three. And i that's with a lunch break and a little grandma break. So I feel like as we get more used to this, the flow is gonna go a lot better. The other thing that I'm noticing, I, I don't know about you guys, but I use some new curriculum this year. So like our writing curriculum is new. My, my big girl's language curriculum is new. We've used it years before, but we haven't used it recently. And it, uh, is a learning process to remember like how does this work or this new thing like I don't have a clue how this writing curriculum works I'm learning as I go that takes extra time it's not just like sit down and write this you know what you're doing I have to figure this out so my tip is and this is what I finally told myself give yourself some grace especially in the beginning of the school year it's not going to be perfect when you start it's not gonna be perfect maybe for the first month. You're getting used to a new schedule, getting used to new curriculum, getting used to your kids and new grades. You know, some of them have harder things this year and more, they have more assignments and, and just things are harder as they get older. Give grace to yourself and to your kids and just relax a little bit. And this was the first day that I really felt like, um, well, the first couple days were really good. Then I started to stress us out 
trying to stay on schedule. So this was the first day, you know, in like a week or so that I really felt like it was a good flow to our school day. We enjoyed it. We did a science experiment in the kitchen for my little ones that a lot of times I'm tempted to be like, oh, I don't have time for that. No, we did it and it was so good and they learned it and they remembered it and they told dad about it at lunchtime and it was good. So this was kind of like an all over the place video. So I hope you guys aren't like spinning right now, but I just wanted to share kind of what's been going on, what's worked, what hasn't worked and what I'm learning. I'm still learning. So if you're a homeschool mom, whether you've been homeschooling for 20 years or whether this is your first year homeschooling, it's all a learning process, no matter how long you've been doing it. So don't be hard on yourself. I just wanted to encourage you guys and I still have to tell myself too, hey, just cause I've been homeschooling for eight or nine years doesn't mean I am an expert at this cause I'm not. I'm just, it's always a learning process. If you're someone who's used the same curriculum since day one, every single year, then yes, that might be really easy. But if you're somebody like me who likes change, change can be really good, but change takes adjustment. It takes time to get used to new things. So I just needed that little reminder. So our homeschool is going really well and I am encouraged that it's going to continue to go well and I'm not going to take out the good stuff. I'm not going to skip over the important things or rush through Bible time or things like that in order to get math done and reading done and stuff like that. So uh, that is my little reminder to me. Don't do it. And to you guys too. So I hope this was an encouragement to you. If you guys have any questions about anything, uh, I don't know if you will now because you're like, she is not an expert and she has no idea what she's doing. And that's fine. But I hope I can be kind of like a friend that can just bounce things off you. I feel like this was just a little chat, you know, a, a coffee chat except I don't drink coffee. So I have tea here. I'll drink some tea. It was fun to chat with you guys even though you didn't say anything back yet. So say some stuff back in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. And uh, that's how I get to hear from you guys is in the comments. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I really hope your school year is going well, whether you've been in school for a month and a half or whether you're year round homeschoolers and you never stopped, or if you just started this week, just give yourself grace, have patience, enjoy it. Just enjoy it. I will see you guys next week. Thanks for chatting with me. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, please subscribe. Then you can be a part of the Art Thrifty Homeschool family. I would love to have you here. Thanks so much for being here and I will see you guys next time.